Sorry. Sorry. Starting where you're starting from now, next May, what would you classify as being successful from your starting point now? Um, it wouldn't be. Um, class a successful season. Um, I think um, playoff place is, um, is well within reach. Um, an awful lot depends on who we can get through the door. Um, when we went full time at Hayes and Yedding, I started planning in February. Um, this time I started planning last week. So it's there's going to be some players coming that we make mistakes on. Um, and it's going to be how few mistakes we make. Um, I like to think that I've made, or we've made, um, fewer mistakes than we have got it right. So, to be honest, it, it's, it's going to see who's available, who we decide to take, who comes available in, um, in August. I think in critical positions, if we get injuries at the wrong time, it's, there's so many different factors. But to be honest, I want to be in the league, I want to get promoted. Um, I don't want to be in the conference south. Um, but if we are next season, then we'll go to work again, and I'd like to think we'll be in a better position to attack the season, if you like. Um, how do you, the rest of the backroom staff and players in fact, intend to bring more fans into the club on a weekly basis to ensure a, a bigger financial gain? To be quite honest with you, I don't think that's my job. Um, and if it is, then I'm not going to have enough time in the day. Um, I'm sure that there's going to be some initiatives. I'm sure Dave has some ideas on that. But um, believe me, it's going to, it's going to be a full-time job, um, getting the team to go and getting the team right. So anything else to do with the club, that's not really my job. I, I'm sure that I'm kept informed and Simon has requested that I, um, that I attend certain meetings so I have an understanding of how the club works, but as to get my fans through the door, that's a big job in itself. So I'll pass you on to Dave. <laughs> Cheers. Basically, um, we've got to look at the whole town itself and the whole area and, you know, further afield than just, you know, within. If you, if you just start off where we are now, we did a presentation to the council the other night, and within half a mile of the ground, there's three and a half thousand houses. Now you work out three and a half thousand houses, how many people on average live in the houses, and there you are, that's, that's a good start to begin with. But, you know, we're interested, the reason I've you know, come on board here and Simon asked me to join the club, is to spread the word about um, the football club to some of the big companies that are in the town that currently aren't getting touched. Now I'm not going to come here and start knocking what's been done in the past. You know, the past the past, I'm looking forward. And you know, straight away, um, over the last three weeks, I've been making contacts with, hopefully, the right people, um, in some big companies within the council. But basically, what tonight I'd like to say to you guys in here is, you know, you've all got contacts. You've all got business contacts, families, friends, Get them to use this place because you know this place um, we're hiring it out left, right, and centre, but we want to take it to another level. Um, you know, we've got some great facilities here. The chairman's very, very ambitious and wants to take it to the next level. You know, it's already at a great level. You know, the bars are taking a fantastic amount of money. Commercially, it's not taking enough money, which is you know I've got to turn that around myself. Um, but you know, it's not down to just me myself. You know. I want you guys to help me as much as possible and you know I'm sure if there's people that come into the club because of you guys out there and you're going to feel even bigger part of the club than you are already. So you know it's about all working together, all being focused and all singing from the same hymn sheet and collectively you know on the field, off the field I think we can do it this season and you know have a club that you're all very very proud of. Welcome Gary. And, and um, I think <laughs> we, we will get used to it, I'm sure. Um, one of the things is, is really you've got a track record with Hayes and Yedin, and, and that's good. You've kept them you know, up there. Now, some of the teams that you know in this league and, and conference are pretty terrier-like, and uh, people like uh, Holloway and McMahon sort of were equally terriers for, for farmer because they could, you know, I think people like Holloway could pick anybody. Um, but the thing is, is that how, can I just ask you about the balance between youth and experience? How are you going to balance the team in a way that um, has that sort of maturity and experience as well as the young ones that come through? I suppose it's a difficult question without being specific. I can't be specific until I look at the players that are available. Um, 
you can look at uh, working with a strong spine. So you look at uh, experience centre forward, experience centre midfielder, experience centre half, experience goalkeeper. Um, or you can look and say grab a ball from the back and go with a, uh, an experienced back four if you like, and then fill it up. It depends on the players available. Um, again, I keep going back to it because he's a standing start. Um, I'm in the job a week, whereas everybody else has had months to plan at, at this level in this team. Um, so it's it's really what what players are available. I would be confident that we will be competitive in every game. We may not be consistent, but we will be competitive. Um, and the players will work to the best of their ability. Um, it's going to be a sore after place to be. Um, I've had lots and lots of calls, uh, cold calls this, this week from agents, players, managers, um, talking about players that would like to come here. Um, so I think we'll be competitive. Um, but I think trying to say we're going to win it, we're not going to win it, etc. is is a difficult job because I, I don't have any players signed, um, but we will have. Um, when I first started started managing, I was very nervous when we got to this stage of the close season and many players signed. Whereas now, I don't think the squad will settle down probably until September um, because the more and more players come available, the better players, the kind of players that I want will first of all go to League One, League Two clubs, not get deals with them, filter down, and then gradually as they filter down, a big attraction will be the facilities that are here at the ground, at the training ground, and the fact that we're full time. And that attraction will, I think, hopefully bring along a little bit more quality. Yeah, yeah I mean, the, the point I was trying to make as well is that we're not going to have a team of 16 and 17 year olds, are we? It's going to be a balance between experience and probably mid-twenties and, and some of those things. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't think you can put an age on it. Because if I say that I can only sign a 34 year old and a 19 year old, something like that, you, those players don't come available. It's, and sometimes you might get a 21 year old, 21 year old who's very experienced. I've played 300 games since he was 16. So it's it's based on the players that are out there. What I will say is the team will be competitive. You you don't seem to have a very good job at Hayes and Yeti. I mean, you're, the record speaks for itself. Can I ask what made you leave them and come here? Obviously, you did you feel you've got as far as you could with them? You see more potential, or what, what are your thoughts on and then why you did it? At Hayes and Yeti, there was a, um, a situation that. Um, was, was difficult to work with. Um, it was two clubs that came together, and there was a very difficult political situation. And probably our greatest achievement was keeping that off the pitch, so the players weren't aware of it. Um, we spent four and a half years there, um, and gradually it became more and more difficult. Um, the, the, I think the final straw was that there was a massive budget cut, which felt, uh, I'll be honest, I felt it, was, it wasn't sustainable in the conference. Um, at that stage, there wasn't there wasn't too many jobs available. Um, I did have an interview for another job, um, which I, I wasn't too keen to take um, for various reasons. But the his and Yelling job, I, I do think they've gone. I take we had taken them as far as we possibly could. I don't think that club will finish as high as they did last season for at least five seasons. Um, and so I was I was looking for work for them, uh, basically. Um, I haven't had a chat with the chairman. I'm very excited about that. Um, he's very. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm that. He's, uh, very close. Yeah, very close. <laughs> he's got a vision for the club that is very exciting. Um, I was fortunate enough to play for some very good clubs in my career, um, and the ones that had a plan to go forward and a way of achieving it were always the best places to be. The clubs that were moving forward, which is which is what Yelling was when I first got the job, and then it merged into Hayes and Yelling. Um, so it was a very exciting challenge, and to be honest, once we got quite close to agreeing, I was pretty much assured that I wanted the job, and the only concern was that there was, and there might be somebody else in for it. Um, we shook hands on the deal um, last week, and, and we were, I was quite happy to do it. And so I'm very excited about it. It's, it's a club that's on the move. Like I've said it to various players this week, that I do think this club will be promoted in the next three to five years, regardless of who's the manager, um, as long as the chairman stays. Um, and so, a club that's moving forward is exciting. I think the chairman as well will not take a club up without it being competitive. So I think to go up into the conference and be competitive, it's a it's a good league to be in. There's some big clubs there, there's some great places to go. Um, and we've had experience of it for the last two years, and that's where we want to be. Thank you. Right, good evening, everyone. Um, excuse me, the pleasure to I, I wasn't actually going to say anything tonight, but um, <laughs> I think it's probably a bit unfair of the guy sitting here for me not to uh, participate. Because <laughs> I presume 
you know, you all want to know. I made a decision to take the club in a slightly different direction, and uh, I've got to answer some questions on that. I appreciate. I wanted it to, tonight to be about meet the manager, obviously uh, meet the new guys here at the helm, but I also want to explain to you why we've taken this decision, and uh, it wasn't a decision that's taken lightly. Uh, so the fourth season I've just finished at this club. Uh, we've come a long way in a very short period of time. Obviously, we've had uh, two titles, two playoff losses, uh, and we moved back to where the old club was uh, prior to, to me coming in. Now, I can remember sitting here, the first ever fans forum that, that I did, and uh, basically everyone was asking me, you know, who are you for a start, and uh, where are you going to take the club, and what are we going to do with the club? And uh, I, I remember vividly, I sort of threw it back and said, well, you tell me where you want the club to be. And uh, unequivocally, it was, we want to be back in the Conference National. And I think that's the perception of most of our supporters that we've obviously played at that level for many, many years. But, you know, it's a very different league now. And um, when we were looking last year at possibly being in with a shout, I've got to sit back and think, well, you know, how can a club like Farber possibly complete with Luton, for instance, and um, Fleetwood? Clubs that have got in excess of a million pound wage bills, you know, um, fourfold what we would have if we had gone up. Um, and it's, you know, you've got to look at where we're going with this. And uh, I think our natural level at the moment is probably a top five or six conference South club, bottom five or six conference National club. If we did, if we do go up, I want to be in a position where we don't come straight back down. And uh, so I canvassed lots of conference national managers, um, went to see a few games when time permitted, and everyone I spoke to was unequivocal that you need to be full-time at conference national level. If you're playing teams that have got better players than you, you need to be set up right, you need to be organised, you need to practice on the training ground and work out how you compete. Um, obviously, um, Gary and Gareth, um, you know, it's been well recorded, they've done an exceptional job at Hayden Yedding on very limited resources. I think Gary's comment to me earlier was that we've got more people at this fans forum than they have at games. So, you know, that, that, so you know, it gives you an understanding. So, um, you know, we would have gone full time if we got promoted. We didn't get promoted. Uh, we've had a couple of seasons where uh, our budget has probably been unsustainable. Um, I'm responsible for that. I'm the chairman. I authorise contracts, etc., etc. But we signed a lot of players on two-year contracts, um, and obviously it's a very different world we live in today. And when you've got contracts that are fixed and your revenues are dropping and you can't change anything about it, it's been quite a painful two-year period until we can do anything about it, which obviously at the end of last season we've been able to do. So we're taking a different approach. Um, you know, we want to build a club. We want to go into the Conference National. We want to go there as a sustainable club. Um, so we're taking the decision to go full-time on a reduced budget and I can understand you know, many of your concerns. We had a great side last year, we had some fa fantastic players, but it was at a fairly significant cost to the club. Um, from day one, I've been championing, championing um, you know, producing local players. We've got a fantastic youth structure. We haven't seen one player come through, I don't think, in the last couple of years, notwithstanding the fact that we've had players from our academy going to Cardiff and Celtic and... Um, places like that, so we're obviously reducing players, but you know, I was kept being told that they weren't good enough, and um, you know, it's very disheartening for me. So, equally, you know, I want to be a club that produces their own players, and uh, I've got every confidence that these guys have got the ability to do it. Obviously, you know, Paul Hart is coming back, is also a very important part of the team as well. And uh, you know, that, that's where we're going with it. We, we, we're going to ensure we're sustainable. It's the way football's going generally. I don't know if anyone heard the news today, the Football League have just adopted a, a wage to turnover ratio that they're all going to have to follow and they can only spend so much money. You look at the likes of Crawley last year, who you know, spending £250,000 on a player in the Conference National, it's madness. And uh, you know, we, we've had a bit of a reality check and we looked at where we are. You know, we're, we're not looking at the next season, we're looking at the next five seasons. And uh, you know, I think this is the right thing for Farnborough Football Club. It might sound a quite drastic move, but uh, I'm absolutely convinced it's the right, the right thing for the club. So uh, that's why we've done it. And I'm now going to pass you back over to the meeting manager. Right? <laughs>